Yesterday, Thibodeau, Cox, Smith, Epperson. We have a quorum. Barely got on that. Barely got on that. going to lead the uh, invocation and Mr. Cox a pledge. Come on, guys. Dear Lord, just thank you for allowing us to be here today. Forgive us our many sins and watch over and protect us and be with us as we go forward with your business here in the parish. I just ask and pray that you be with each and every one, be the one, be with the ones who are not here, and just ask and pray that you have a special prayer for each and every one of our residents in our districts, and uh, thank you for all the wonderful things you've done. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Please face the flag, remember the proper salute, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any uh, agenda additions? Okay. Don't see any. Citizens comments. Uh, citizens who wish to address the commission on any issue other than zoning, please fill out a comment card located in the chamber for you and return to the president or clerk of the commission. Individual comments are limited to three minutes. Citizens who wish to address the Commission on matters relative to public hearings will be limited to a cumulative total of 15 each for or against an issue. Those who wish to speak or make a presentation are asked to select their speakers and address the points they wish to consider with this limitation in mind. And if you have a cell phone, please turn your cell phone off or I'll put it on vibrate, please. Uh, I've got one card, uh, Kristen McCain. He's here, in the back. You give us your name and address, and you have three minutes to uh, address the commission. All right. My name is Christian McCain, 9647 Hempley Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71106. Come here today, Mr. Cox sometimes gets his hand tied, but he's been helpful in a lot of situations, but the road construction out on Linwood Avenue, there's been nothing but a mess since it started. Instead of doing it one lane at a time, they've done it two lanes, and they've left Worked through nights, three nights in a row, and then took three-day weekend the next week. Things like that. Uh, had some problems. I've called in, uh, getting some complaints from people around. I guess since I've organized a few meetings out there, they call me. Got some pretty good results from Mr. Ken Ward when I first called up here, but then some other things happened. Uh, some bad behavior from some of the people working out there. Call Mr. Ernest. Some of it's been addressed. Some of it hadn't been. And when I say bad behavior, I mean things that shouldn't be done in public. They just overlaid that section of road when they opened up the Southern Loop last three years, maybe four years ago. And here we are tearing up a good road. And it had been a mess. Left it when it was raining so bad that people were getting stuck in the middle of Linwood. Now, it just don't seem to make sense. I've had my windshield broke for the first time in 35 years. I've never had to replace a windshield. And the dump trucks they were using before I made this complaint didn't have a license plate one on the front or the back. Now they're using <coughs> brand new dump trucks and I've noticed they've got them. But I still hadn't gotten called back about my windshield. I know one lady got her car fixed, but it tore out the whole bottom of it. That's how bad it has been out there for the past six weeks. And that's the one thing that seems not to get a whole lot of attention. And I know Mr. Cox called, and it seems like our administrator, Mr. Glass and Mr. Ward's hands are tied on the way this contract was made. They, can't do or can't respond to it. That's not good business if it's asked me. 
And the only other thing I come up here today about, and I'm still trying to get for the past two years, a detailed audit of Fire District 6 expenses. I appreciate it. Thank you much for letting me talk. I wanted that on record as far as the satisfaction of the construction on that Linwood has not been good. Who did you talk to about getting your windshield repaired? I called and left a message for Ken Ward and Mr. Glass about, it's been about 11 days ago now. Have, have you spoken to the contractor? No, sir. I have not called Mr. Ernest Contractor yet, but I don't know that that's the people I'm supposed to call. They say one thing one day, another thing the other day. Mr. Lucky, who, who does he need to call? Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass has, uh, between him and Mr. Ward, they do have direct communication with Mr. Ernest out there. And I believe Ken tried to address some of that last time he was uh, in Monday's work session with y'all. Uh, and I know that, uh, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, but I think that <coughs> the time, Chris, that you were talking about, Mr. McCain, that you were talking about when your windshield got broke, I think that's when Ken said that there wasn't any gravel out there at that time. Am I right about that? Anyway, that's where we're going with the, that's where the things end up getting off. But uh, we, we are, we do have your concerns. I will tell you that, Mr. McCann. The immediate future. problem is getting his windshield repaired, and that it would be the responsibility of the contractor. Is that correct? Yes. You just have to check into it. The contractor is the first step, and then the parish would be the second step. Being honest, that's not even high on my list. It's the way that they're doing the work at nights. That 24 hours for a three day period and then the very next week didn't work for four days. Doesn't make sense. They didn't work all day today. Beautiful day. We're expecting rain tomorrow and through the weekend. Kind of got a mess still out there. We've got wires sticking up in the middle of the, of the street. I've got pictures if somebody wants to see them. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you. Cox. Yeah, uh, what I'd like to do is between Mr. Glass, Mr. Ward, my only parish term, Mr. Glass, Mr. Ward, uh, I'd like to set up a meeting with the contractor to see their timeline because I'm like Mr. McCain. If it's pretty today, you should be working. Now, I can understand Mr. Ward uh, told us Monday, at Monday's meeting, they were ahead of schedule. That's fine if they, if they say that. I'd rather really have the schedule working every day and getting it done. So I'd like to meet if, uh, if our guys can set up a meeting with the contractor and get to the bottom of this. I'm sure we can hit I'm sure that we can accommodate that. Mr. Escudero. I would suggest that uh, before that meeting, you might want to review the uh, conditions of the contract because it's like most contracts. It doesn't say they have to work every day. They've got a finite timeline to complete a project, and there's other projects going on. So probably from a legal standpoint, we can't tell them as long as they're in compliance with the contract. But what we would be able to do if we find that out to be true is encourage them to perhaps stay on it you know, more diligently and get it done. And I can understand that, but when I have constituents that call me from... 10, 11, 12, and 1 o'clock in the morning because this contractor decided they're going to work 24 straight hours for three days. That kind of, if it was on my street, I'd be out there telling them to get, get, off, get off my street because their contract doesn't mean they, they put me at an inconvenience. And that's what they've done to these residents for at least three nights. Now, you know, whether, they're, whether they have another contract or not, Robert, could you come up for a second? You can sit if you want to right there, Mr. McCain. <laughs> Is, uh, by your recollection, what kind of stipulation do they have a certain date by? Normal contracts, uh, it's, you're given a specific time frame to do the work. You know, just say, usually it's 200 working days. And, you know, they have the time to do that. If they want to do it in 50 days, they can. If they want to do it in the full 200, they can. Uh, all road construction contracts are written that way. So they almost all, the reason for that is because they do have multiple projects going on, and they can go back and forth between them. Okay, but, did, okay, and my, my way of looking at it as well, and thank you for giving me the time, 
this is a major thoroughfare for that area out there. If they were to put a clicker out there, the longer they wait, the worse it's going to get as far as traffic, inconvenience, complaints, stuff like that. So I've been blocked in my own driveway for over an hour to wait for them to get machine out of the way or come back and knock the dirt down to where I can drive a F 150 truck over. But I'd like to realize it was going to have a meeting because it's such a big thing. all this solved. And one other thing we need to look at is when they're working at night, are they abiding by our noise alarms? No, they're not. Well, that needs to be dealt with also then. Okay. All right, let's, let's make that happen next week or so. Thanks, sir. Okay, uh, any visitors? Yes. I don't see any. Do any special resolutions? No, sir. Communication mm -hmm. committee reports? Yes. I've got uh, Mr. Lynn. On Tuesday, February the 28th at the Broadmoor Library um, on Preston, we're going to have a meeting with FEMA and the, the uh, residents of the Dixie Garden area. And any other any other residents of Caddo Parish that would want to come are welcome to come. However, we're going to focus on Dixie Garden in relation to the 20-year FEMA flood maps that have come out and how they will affect the neighborhood and what can we do to assist them and if they wanted to dispute the FEMA readings that they have a 90-day window to address that issue um, and that meeting would be a the good time to initiate that that dispute That's what, all. have we set a, a time for that um, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the time thank you for asking 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is how long that that I plan on being there to meet with uh, the constituents of, of District 4 and principally of the Dixie Garden area. Thank you. All right, Mr. Epps. Yes, sir. First of all, I would like to give thanks to the administration for uh, putting together the infrastructure and the things that was needed for uh, District 12 information meeting on January 26th. Uh, all the citizens that attended that I had an opportunity to talk to and that called me afterwards as well as a lot of the uh, participating organizations that render services to the citizens in the parish uh, were quite impressed with uh, with the way that things were, were set up. Uh, as usual, I always give a survey sheet out to all of the participants that attend with a number of questions that I think are relevant to uh, our, my responsibilities and our responsibilities as commissioners in the parish. And one of the surveys that I do is I ask them what is their opinion of the services uh, that are rendered by the Cattle Parish Commission as it is they have experienced throughout the year, throughout their times of being familiar with it. Last year, we uh, our rating system is for one to a ten, one being the lowest, ten being the highest. Last year, we got a seven. Uh, this year, I got 128 uh, respondents back, and they gave us an eight this year. And I've uh, Personally, I've seen that to be uh, quite relevant uh, because everywhere that I've gone thus far throughout uh, the parishes for as grocery stores and churches and public meetings and everything, people are quite pleased with what has transpired on this body uh, throughout the last four years. And uh, I get quite a lot of compliments. Uh, also on the survey, we had Mr. Wilson to give a presentation of the upcoming tax renewals. Uh, that will be upcoming on April the 21st. Uh, we had a, a basic uh, sheet that we thought is, was quite simple, quite palatable, and quite understanding. Uh, he explained that to the constituents that was there. And one of the questions that was on the survey was after the presentation uh, relating to the tax renewals that's upcoming on April the 21st, how would you uh, vote? And 95% of the respondents vote, 96% of the respondents voted that uh, once they got that understanding that they would be voting uh, yes. Also, we'd like to give a thanks to Mr. Jeffrey Ware, who is the executive director of the American Road Society. He's been uh, uh, quite uh, good in helping us to uh, provide that particular uh, venue there each year. Uh, for him and his staff, the place was in top-notch conditions and a lot of things that uh, we weren't even expected that they put in place and made it a good meeting. Also, uh, 
I don't know if not any of you may remember, we had some individual that came forward prior to last year's uh, presidential and major elections that I, on our court, our steps and stated uh, there was an issue with voter fraud and things of that nature. <coughs> so I've been following that basically ever since. And we realizing that we are coming into uh, our first election this fall after redistricting. Of course, you know, we, I expected some problems and did have a few, but they were very minimal uh, in light of a lot of the changes that we had. I know I had a couple of major changes within my <coughs> district. So I had Mr. Robinson to uh, sort of give an analysis as to what transpired with the redistricting. Uh, and I talked with Gary Lofton. Uh, he stated that uh, a lot of his, his individuals that worked the poll, there weren't too many glitches there. Uh, if it was, it was a mix up as to where someone voted. Uh, there was, on my particular redistricting, I just found about three streets that was off, so I would encourage my colleagues to sort of look at that and make sure uh, uh, all of the new areas that you had into your particular districts that everything is in place. So it was, everything went quite well. Uh, Mr. Robinson checked with the Secretary of State which any complaints of fraud or any sort of uh, illegal things that may come on as to voting and that's between from 2008 eight elections up to the last election that we had uh, there were none reported to his office nor to the Secretary of State's office which would handle those complaints. Uh, one thing he noted that Cattle Parish uh, have a high school voters day program that's headed by Mr. Robert Jackson mm -hmm. who has received a congressional commendation on the very successful effort that they do. Each year over 1,000 high school seniors are raised to vote and this is an effort that Mr. Jackson started and he got a congressional commendation relative to that. Uh, we've experienced a number of voter registration drive with community organizations, churches, unions, and there have been no particular incidents uh, in reference to any illegalities or any improprieties as far as voter registration in Caddo Parish is concerned. As a matter of fact, uh, there have even been voter registration efforts uh, during Mardi Gras parades. Uh, Mr. Robson will continue his uh, voter registration program this summer throughout all the three Memorial Branch libraries in Caddo Parish, and he will continue to vote edu education uh, and registration week in participation with the state of Louisiana for this year. And I will pass this down and the uh, clerk can give copies to each commissioner that may be interested uh, in that particular information. Also, anyone that would think it may be a good idea, uh, just something that uh, we throw on out, that we do something uh, to honor our veterans from the Iraqi war. We know that that situation is at end. and I realize that we still have something going on in Afghanistan. However, that is a, a campaign that was separate within itself and uh, basically it is to an end. So if anyone would be interested in, uh, and not only just us, but uh, that's Freeport, I mean, I'm sorry, that's Caddo, Bossier, and the Soda Parishes. Uh, contact myself and we'll see if we, it's something we might want to do. And then if not, we'll, we'll leave it alone. Uh, Mr. Glass, did you, uh, uh, the lady that was concerned with, is Mr. Glass still in? He's outside. Okay. Jimmy, are you familiar with the lady that was present at the meeting about the flooding? Come on up. To come, on, come on up. Uh, in front of Bethlehem Baptist yes. Church on West 70th and East Bird Coons. No, sir, I am not. Okay. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> said, no, I didn't talk with that lady. Okay. Well, we'll get together on that because I imagine that's going to be between the DOTD too. You know, they just redid that area there. Yes, sir. So we, I, I'll get more information on that. Okay. okay. Mr. Okay. We'll get Mr. Glass to get with you right after the meeting's over with, okay? Okay. Uh, is Mr. Everett in? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Everett, as for the citation which that was issued on snow mass and treats, you know, the multiple counts that were going up in the backyard of that citizen that you investigated? Did they comply with the citation as far as the vaccinations? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. What is that? Uh, <coughs> we have an issue I think Mr. Smith and myself were concerned about on Mount Olive Church Road. Is Mr. Demetri in? Yes, sir. Mr. Demetri, are you familiar with that? They say some illegal dumping? There's no illegal dumping. Okay. Uh, I went out to Mount Olive Church Road and I spoke with the uh, gentleman out there he was 
um, he has a business. He brought uh, materials in and we spoke and he immediately started cleaning it up that day. Okay. And so I'm, I told him I'll be back for a follow up and uh, plus he's going to put up a privacy fence so no one has to see anything that he's brought in and we let him know about the ordinance that the JPs and the constables have the authority that the commission gave them through ordinance where the constable can go out. Uh, if he doesn't clean it up, he can be brought to JP court <coughs> and the JP can find him anywhere from 100 to $500 per day till he gets it cleaned up. Okay. So that, that would be an issue that the JP, I mean that the constable can go out and issue him a citation. Uh, the public works jurisdiction deals with abandoned dilapidated structures. Uh, the commission uh, went through the state legislature, got the ordinance changed to where it gave the JPs that authority and the constables. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying because I spoke with uh, with the complainant that <clears throat> wished to remain anonymous and stated that uh, the constable come out and told her that that wasn't covered under our current property standards law. Uh, Commissioner, so as I told you before, there are some JPs that will enforce your ordinance. There's some that won't. There's right. some constables that will enforce your ordinance, mm -hmm. and some that will not. Okay, good. And that's what I'm leading up to. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Frazier, who, when citations are issued, do they, they come to your department? Um, no, sir. They actually go to the JP courts okay. when the citations are issued. Okay. Well, could someone from staff uh, get me a for the last two years, the amount of citations <coughs> since we've implemented our property standards uh, act that has been uh, written by Constable David Anderson and whatever constable that he would be responsible to submit those to. Someone can give me that? Okay. okay. Because I've been, uh, uh, the respond the, the complainant stated that uh, the constable told her that that was he couldn't do anything, it wasn't on his jurisdiction, and so I, I've been getting some 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 concerns and complaints from this particular constable, and uh, you know, not returning phone calls, not answering phones, always excuses. So, uh, you know, if, it, if we put laws in place and and they're elected and they're sworn to uphold them. If they either uphold them uh, or resign and get out the way and we put somebody else in, that will. So that's why they're here to serve the people. Uh, my last issue is I would like to announce that I will be a candidate for uh, executive board member at large, Mr. Cox. Yes, sir. And that's possibly a position that you will be vacating yes, sir. upon successful election to your <coughs> position. And I will ask my colleagues for your support. And uh, I certainly be needing a few uh, poster boards and pictures, and uh, and I would need my few ducats if you don't mind giving me a few. And uh, we'll go forward here. Yeah. <laughs> you want dollars and four chains. Okay. So that, that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Bowman. Citations. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'd like to recognize my bishop, Larry Brandon. Um, Praise Temple Full Gospel. Hello, Glad to have him here. Um, and Mr. President, I certainly would like to thank you uh, for the rules and bylaws copy <laughs> and the disciplinary procedures that you you gave me everybody, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got them. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd just like to thank you and uh, this administration, especially uh, Woodrow and Mr. Randy Lucky, for facilitating the meeting today that I've been very passionate to me about the situation facing the residents in the Cherokee Park neighborhood uh, situation. Uh, we had a great meeting between the government body, the city, the parish, Shreveport Green, the Levy Board, and I hope our goal is to have something done within the legal ramification of the law uh, for the residents in that area to give them some relief, uh, Commissioner Cox. 
one of the things that concerned most of the commission of the special president was the legal legal ramification of how we can do it. We don't want to do anything illegal or unethical, but we want to do things by the law. And hopefully we worked out those problems that we may have to see for see them down the road. I just want to say thank you for keeping your eyes on the prize. Thank you. All right. You were on here. Are you? Yeah, I just follow up on what Mr. Kim was saying. Plus, I do need that information since he brought it up about the J.P.'s. We I need that information about all J.P.'s simply because of some of the things that we're going to be working on this year. And if I can have it for last year, what each J.P. and each constable did. And it may take a while, but that's OK. And that's something we will be working on this year. Something else. Mr. Epson did say he's running for member at large. And I would like for everybody to give him our full support. And I will be running for the third vice president of the state Louisiana Association for Police Jury this year. So any support will be happy to take it my way, too. Yeah. Something right and something left. And but anyway, again, run hard and I'll help you out in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you. We'll help you, too, buddy. President of the court, some of you will note that you have a pen, a C-SPAN pen. And a couple of us were fortunate enough to get a hat. Ken, because Ken really was responsible for or had been involved in this during his presidency. And that was good enough to give me one. I hope the pens work. And I think it's March 3rd and 4th, I believe, is when the C-SPAN will be spotlighting Shreveport and Caddo Parish. So I don't know what time. But if you miss it, then you can get it online. Just go to C-SPAN on the computer and they have it in their files. Okay, Mr. Farr. Next, we adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on January the 5th, 2012. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second by Mr. Williams. Second by Mr. Epperson. Cash votes, please. Unanimous. Adopt the minutes of the special meeting held on January 9th, 2012. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson. Second by Ms. Bowman. Cash your vote, please. Unanimous. Adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on January 19th, 2012. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Lynn. Second by Ms. Williams. That passes. We'll move to public hearing and ordinances. Ordinance number 5172-2012 to amend Chapter 8 of the Caddo Parish Code of Ordinances to enact Section 8-71 regarding the sale of animals in Caddo Parish. Have anyone to speak in favor of Ordinance 5172? Anyone to speak against the ordinance? Okay, that public hearing is closed. Next, Ordinance number 5173 of 2012, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator or designate the sale of parish and tax interest. Anyone to speak in favor of Ordinance 5173? Against? Fair public hearing closed. Ordinance for final passage, Ordinance 5172 of 2012 to amend Chapter 8 of the Caddo Parish Code of Ordinances to enact Section 871 regarding the sale of animals in Caddo Parish. Second. Moved by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. Smith. Anyone need to speak on it? Unless somebody has a question. Okay, cast your vote. That's okay. It's unanimous of those that are here. Ordinance number 5173 of 2012, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator designate the sale of parish tax interest. So moved, Chair. Moved by Mr. Williams. Second. Second by Mr. Cox. Cast your vote, please. Passes. 
Next, we move ordinances for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5174, 2012, amending the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures for the Riverboat Fund in the amount of $40,000 for the C.C. Antoine Black History Empowerment Plan for the year 2012. So moved. That's just introduction. I'm sorry. I'm ahead of the game, man. Oh, my. Ordinance number 5175, 2012, amending and reenacting Chapter 26, Section 26-185, of the Cattle Parish Code of Ordinances to add the streets of Stoyer Circle to the list of stops intersections. Ordinance number 5176 to accept the streets in Woolworth Oaks Unit 3 into the Parish of Cattle System. Ordinance number 5177 to accept the streets in Woolworth Oaks Unit 4 into the Parish of Cattle System. Ordinance number 5178 to revoke a portion of the dedica dedication of unnamed road in the Parish of Cattle. Ordinance number 5179 to revoke the dedication of an unnamed road in the parish of Cato. Next we move, we move to fourth session minutes. We need to ratify the February 6, 2012 minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Tom Nick, second by Mr. Everson. Next vote, please. <coughs> that passes. <coughs> To move the resolutions. Resolution number 10 of 2012 in support of the American Road Society to submit a grant proposal to the Louisiana Office of State Parks to participate in the Louisiana Recreational Trails Program. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Mr. Everson, second by Mr. Williams. Anybody need to speak? I can't. Cast your vote, please. <laughs> that passes. Move to new business. A confirmation for the commission clerks a 3% man increase for the year 2012. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Bowman, second by several. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cast your vote, please. Seated, Todd. <laughs> that can't be right. That passed. Okay. Next, <laughs> next, we have confirmation for the third administrative <laughs> salary adjustment for the year 2012. Don't move with Jim. Moved by several and second by several. Cash vote, please. Don't move John. Got up. Don't move with Jim. I think Todd manipulated that uh, mode on that.